So as we're looking at permutations, we already mentioned yesterday that permutations are talking about arrangements in a specific order, in a distinct order, okay? So we're going to start with a really, really basic problem. How many different permutations are possible for the letters A, B, C, D, E, and F? Okay? And before we figure it out mathematically, let's actually just like think, think this through. All right? So, first of all, if I'm looking at the letters A through F, the first choice I could have would be A, or I could pick the letter B, or I could pick C, or D, or E, or F, right? Okay, that's easy enough. Now, let's just take one of those options. If I chose A, what are the possibilities for the second letter? This is not hard. B. B. Okay, what's another one? This is not hard. What's an, what's our, okay, what's another one? D. Yeah. Good, thank you, you're catching on. All right. Now, let's just take one of those choices, B. What's our choice for the next letter? Okay, C, D, E, or F, right? And then if I took C, what are my choices? Good, D, E, or F. And if I just took D, what are my choices? E or F, and then... If I'm looking at E, the only choice I have left is F, right? But I want to, I, this is kind of simplistic, but I want you to think about this situation here. How many possibilities did I have for the first letter I chose? Five, one, six. I had six, right? I had six choices for the first one. How many choices did I have for the second letter? Five. Five. Okay. How about for our next one? Four. Good. Mm -hmm. You recognizing a pattern here? Yes. yes. Math is all about patterns. You got to see the patterns, okay? So you'll notice here we've got this pattern. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Now, based on what we looked at yesterday, the fundamental counting principle, what do we need to do with those possibilities? In order to figure out the total number of options that we have. What are we doing? Multiply them together. Multiply them together. Okay, some of you kind of need to wake up and get mentally with us here. All right? I haven't asked one difficult question yet, and we're all, like, staring at me like I have three heads or something. Okay? Let's wake up and get our brains in gear. We only have 30 minutes, so we need to make the most of it. All right? So total arrangements. We've got 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay? Now that looks an awful lot like something else we've done in the past. What does that equal? Six, six yeah. factorial. Six factorial. That's good. That's six factorial. Okay? So check this out. If we have if we have a certain number of items that we want to arrange, okay? If we want to arrange them all in an order, it's just going to be that number factorial. And that's what we see right here. The permutation of n elements is given by n factorial. Okay? So there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15 of you. 
So if I wanted to put all of you in a straight line, how many different ways could I do that? 15 factorial, exactly. Okay? 15 factorial. Now, combinations are easy. Remember, if the order doesn't matter, the combination was easy because there's only one way you can pick everybody, right? Permutations, though, in this case, the notation with six items would have been six permutation six. Okay? Notice we have the little n permutation r, just like we had the n choose r for combinations. All right, well, we have six permutation six. It's going to equal six factorial. Okay. Is that how you arrive when you answer the question? Like, is that how you arrive if you're asking the total arrangement and you're just like six? Um, well, you would tell me what that equals. You would figure it out. You know, twelve seventy-two, seven hundred twenty. Okay. Yeah. Is there going to be a time where it's like six p eight, or it doesn't have to be? Uh, you can't have six p eight, but you could have eight p six. All right. You can't arrange more things than what you have, but you don't have to really care about the arrangement of all of them. Okay. And it, we're going to get to that next here, but. Would that be seven factorial? Um, no. There's actually a formula for it. And it's, it kind of builds off of this. But if we understand this formula, this is the starting point. Okay? And you will, as we'll actually see here, the combination formula is an extension of this as well. So, all right. So does this make sense so far? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's say we have this. Okay. Eight horses are running in a race. How many different ways can they come in first, second, or third? Okay. So notice here, I don't care how the last five horses finish, do I? Nope. nope. All I care about is first, second, and third. So if we think about this, you know, here's, um, here's first place, second place, third place. So how many horses could finish first? Three. No. One at a time. No. Eight. eight. How many different possibilities eight. are there? Eight. There's eight, right? There's eight different possibilities for first place. Okay? Then, how many possibilities are there for second place? Seven. Seven, okay? Because you can't have one horse finish first and second, right? Okay? Six. So then there's six, all right? So this kind of looks like a factorial, doesn't it? Yes. All right? But eight times seven times six, um, whatever that is. 336. 336? Okay. Now, like we said, this kind of looks like a factorial. But it is. If I had an eight factorial here, what would I have to get rid of? Five, the first five terms. The, the, yeah, the five, four, three, and two, and one, right? So I'd have to divide by a five factorial. And you guys just derived the formula for a permutation. Yes. Hold okay? on. Wait, but there's three places, and eight minus three is five. Yeah. And we don't care. That's exactly right. We don't care about the last <laughs> five. All right? So check this out. Here's the number of permutations. You guys just derived this formula. Wow. NPR is N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. All right? So again, understand this formula. N factorial would arrange... This arranges all N elements... Okay, this, by dividing by that, that eliminates the elements that we don't care about. Okay?
All right, does that make sense? Does that make sense? In, in this case, our n elements is the amount of horses. Yeah, in this case, the n elements, we had eight horses total. We only care about the first three. So that would be, in that case, it would have been an eight permutation three. So we have eight factorial over eight minus three factorial. And that's eight factorial over five factorial. Okay? You might say, well, why don't we just do eight times seven times six? Okay? Well, that's fine when there's only three, but if our numbers are a lot bigger, then the permutation formula really comes in handy. Okay? Now, check this out. Our permutation formula looks a lot like the combination formula, doesn't it? And choose our was what? What was our formula? N factorial and n minus r factorial and r factorial. Uh, what? We don't times it by r again. What? Uh, we don't multiply it by r factorial. Yeah, this r factorial part is the is the one difference between the permutations and the combinations. So someone think about that. What do you think that r factorial does here? Oh, it um it adds all the other possibilities instead of eliminating them. Kind of. No. It eliminates it more. It's going to eliminate more possibilities. So which ones are, is it eliminating? Well, wait, is that a multiplication sign in the parentheses? It, no, it's subtraction. N minus R. So okay. think about it. The combination formula is just this formula here okay. with an R factorial in the denominator too. Okay? So again, N factorial would arrange all of them. N minus R factorial eliminates the ones we don't care about. What do you think the R factorial does? Oh, because they're not in a certain pattern. Yes. Okay. So the R factorial eliminates, it eliminates all of the different arrangements of the same elements. Okay. Because we're just forming a group with a combination. So this eliminates eliminates different arrangements of the same elements. In other words, it eliminates the orders, the concept of order. All right, it gets rid of the order issue. But wouldn't it, wouldn't it do the opposite because you're multiplying it by that? Well, you're multiplying it in the denominator. It's in the denominator. Okay. All right. So hopefully, you know, this isn't a connection that is often given, but I hope by explaining how all this works together, it'll make the formulas a lot easier to remember and a lot easier to use, too. Okay? Alright, so... Here. Let's practice with a couple of these here. Let's say that, um, you know, we have 15 of us here. And how many do you want to pick out? Four. Four? Okay. So we're going to put four in order. We're going to put 4 out of the 15 in order. So how many different ways can we do this with our class? 11. Hmm? 11. No. How, how would we figure it out? 
Okay. What are what are we doing? We're doing a permutation, right? So it's what P what? Fifteen P four. Good. Fifteen permutation four. And you're right, it would be fifteen factorial over fifteen minus four. So eleven factorial. And then you just have to simplify it. Okay? So what would that equal? Come on, you should have your calculators. Work these together, okay? Come on, you just sit there and let everyone else figure out the answers. You're going to be totally lost in the future when you actually have to do it by yourself. 32,760. Okay, good. 32,760. All right, is that what others got? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right, so that's the basic idea that we're talking about. Now, there are going to be times where you can just use the counting principle. That's going to be the easiest way to do it. The, the permutation is an extension of the counting principle. All right, and there are going to be times where that's going to be more useful to use. Put it into your formula and figure it out that way. Okay? So, any questions? Yeah, if you did if you did this, what would that be? Combination. That would be the combination. Oh. So that would just be if we were like making teams of four and it didn't matter what position you were in. C stands for combination. Like yes. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here order. Here, no order. Okay. And which are we going to have more of? The permutations. Um, we're going to leave in like one minute. So, um, okay. So, oh wait, hang on. Sorry, clock's an hour ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I thought that was pretty fast. <laughs> um. All right, so yeah, so this one, by the way, if you needed to do this, you already know the 15 factorial, 11 factorial is 32,760. So you could now just do that divided by the 4 factorial, and that would get you there, okay? Cell phones need to be put away and left away. All right, but you will always get more permutations than you will combinations. Okay. So, once we have our 12, 13, 14, 15 multiplied by we divide by a 4 factorial? If you wanted to do the combination, yeah. yeah. You could, you, we could keep going and do that divided by the 4 factorial. And you'd be, you'd be there. Okay. Any questions? All right. Good. Let's practice with just a couple here, okay? Um, oh, you know what? I'm going to...